Yeah, so last time uh, we, def we defined representation, representation of a Lie group or Lie algebra. And representation is just a linear action of a group or Lie algebra uh, that respects the corresponding structure, like a Lie group structure or Lie algebra structure. So representation is a linear action, in short, of say uh, of a group, linear action on a vector space, a vector space respecting a group structure. And if it's a representation of a Lie algebra, then it's a linear action on a vector space respecting a Lie algebra structure, like that. And today, uh, we are going to focus on some special representation. But before that, we need to introduce some more definition. So section 4.4, uh, complete reducibility. Yeah, so we learned uh, irreducible representations and a finite dimensional representation of a group or Lie algebra is completely reducible if it is isomorphic to a direct sum of a finite number of irreducibles, irreducible representations. So, in other words, V is isomorphic to V1, V2, etc. dot dot dot, say VK, where VIs are irreducible. In fact, not every representation has this property. Maybe if you look at this, it may look, uh, it may everything should be expressible in this way, but it's not true. So example, if we define a representation, say, like this. So think of this as a group with addition. It's a group with addition, like a plus. Is a group. So if we define this representation in this way, then this is uh, this is a representation, but it's a not uh, completely reducible. Meaning, this is not irreducible. So it has something or invariance of space but it cannot be written as a direct sum of irreducibles. So you can check this. Uh, if you want to see the proof, proof is not difficult. You can just do it yourself or you can read the textbook. So the point is, not, this is not a, not, not, not a uh, trivial condition. So it, it must be proved if it has this property. But fortunately for us, m everything that we are considering will, be, um, will have this property. Uh, okay, so the definition, a group or Lie algebra has the completely reducible uh, property if every finite dimensional representation of it is completely reducible. So the, 
This property is for a group or algebra, not just a particular representation. That means a, a real algebra has the completely reducible property if, if you consider any ever any representation of that real algebra, it the, the representation has is completely reducible. So, for instance, this group C with plus is not does not have this property. But most Lie groups or Lie algebras we consider uh, have this property. Oh, yeah, so theorem, which I'm not going to prove, uh, theorem, every compact Lie uh, matrix Lie group has the comp completely reducible property. So in most cases, when you have a representation, we will be able to decompose it into irreducibles like that. OK. Uh, now we're going to learn a very important lemma called Shor's lemma. This is uh, very useful in studying uh, representation. So the theorem, this is uh, Shor lem Shor's lemma. Uh, so first, it has uh, three parts. V, W, these are irreducible representations of a group or Lie algebra. And say that V is an intertwining map. So it's a map between representations. It's a linear map that respects uh, the structure, uh, the action. Then um, we have very simple cases. This is either zero map or identity. Oh, sorry, um, isomorphism. Isomorphism of uh, yeah. isomorphism of representation. The second, uh, V irreducible representation. We are always considering a group over group or Lie algebra, so the same thing. And phi is a map to V to itself, so an intertwining map. So intertwining map, right? Uh, then, V is a constant times the identity for some, let's say, for some uh, constant in C. And we are working with representations over C here. And three, and VW, irreducible representations again, of a group or Lie algebra. And we have two intertwining maps, which are non-zero. So non-zero intertwining map, maps. Then they are constant multiple of each other, like that, for some lambda c. So note, for actually for one, we don't have to have the base field C, but for two and three, for two and three, uh, it's important that the base field is C. Otherwise, that's not true. 
yeah, we use the fact that C is algebraically closed. Otherwise, we may not be able to find lambda like that. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to prove this, but if you want to see the proof, uh, it's uh, in the textbook. The important, this will be used uh, several times, so you will need to remember this. Mm. And let's see uh, two corollaries of this lemma. So first, pi irreducible representation of G, group G. If Oh, not necessarily a group, I guess. Uh, or G, the algebra G. If uh, A is in the center of G, uh, or of course uh, G, but what, what's the definition of a center? The, the set of elements that commutes with everything. Then, uh, then this map is in fact a just constant multiple. Lambda i for some c lambda. So we have a representation that means pi of a is a element in general linear group or general linear algebra and that must be uh, just a constant multiple of the identity. That's the corollary. Okay, we will we, we'll prove, let's prove uh, this case. The proof is basically the same, so let's consider uh, the Lie algebra case. Uh, okay, so let's say, suppose pi, so now let's use a lowercase pi because it's for G. Uh, suppose that G, this is X on a vector space V. Okay? Uh, and let X be an element in G. Now we want to show that. So, the, we, so well, what does this mean? This means X commutes with every element, say Y, so it's going to be 0 for all Y in our Lie algebra G. We want to know, we want to show that, so we want, want to show that pi of x equals lambda times i, right? This is uh, the claim. So, yeah, I'm just using x for a. Uh, but by the way, um, because of this, the map this is a map from V to V, right? Because that's what re representation is. This is, in fact, an intertwining map. Why? What, what's the meaning of this? This means uh, because this means intertwining map means it commutes with the ex uh, action. So this is equal to, so this is what we want to show, y dot. So this is the definition of an intertwining map. So think of this as a, think of this as just a one map, phi. So phi, phi can, it, this commutes with the action. That's the definition of an intertwining map. Okay, so we want to check this. Uh, but what is this? This means, but this is really an action here. So this means x dot, oh, let's use the usual color, x dot y dot v. Is this equal to this, y dot x dot v? But what is this? This is uh, x y minus y x v equals 0. This is what that means.
But this is zero because this is x comma y bracket. But our assumption is that this is in the center, so this is zero. So th this is zero. So this is true, and this is the same as this. It's an intertwining map. Is it okay? So it's an intertwining map. Then by Schwarz lemma, yeah, that's it. That's uh, the, this is a, as a map. It's a lambda times uh, identity. So that's the proof for some lambda. Another corollary is that corollary every irreducible representation of a commutative group or Lie algebra, commutative Lie algebra is of dimension one. The dimension is always one. Proof. So let's consider the Lie algebra case. The Lie group case or the group case is the same. So let's say G is a commutative Lie algebra. And let's say V is an irreducible representation. So this is a vector space, but if there is an action, we consider that as a, as a representation. So we have some action there. So V is a representation, irreducible, and then by the previous corollary, by the previous corollary, uh, commutative, what does that mean? The center is uh, the whole, whole space. This means everything, every two elements commute. This means uh, center of G is itself. And by the previous corollary, uh, what can I say? So this action, this action is, if you think of this as a representation pi, this is really what this is. What this is. But we know that this is lambda times identity, so it's lambda times v. So it's for some lambda. Uh, maybe to be more accurate, for every x in g, we can find lambda like that. So lambda depends on x. Once x is chosen, you can find uh, lambda, a constant, satisfying this. So if you choose a different, a different x, then you may get something different, lambda, but still a constant. But what does, it, what does this mean? This means, this means every subspace W of V is invariant. Is an invariant subspace. Is that right? Because of this. So what, what's the meaning of an invariant subspace? If you take an action, it, it stays just there. But it stays there because action is just a constant multiplication. You just, if, if lambda is in W, constant times lambda is W in W, so invariant. That means every subspace is an invariant subspace, and because it's an irreducible, the dimension must be one. Because otherwise, if dimension is two or larger, you can find a vector, a subspace with smaller dimension. So it's a non-trivial subspace, which is a non-trivial irreducible. So it's gonna, it's not going to be a irreducible representation. So dimension must be one. Otherwise, you can find a uh, non-trivial invariance of space. Okay. Um, 
Now, finally, we can talk about this um, very specific example. The presentations of SL2C. So representation of a commutative real algebra is just trivial, right? So this is uh, non-trivial, uh, it's non-commutative, so it's um, complicated enough. But it's very simple as a real algebra, so we can classify all the irreducible representations of this. So we, we will do that in today. And it will uh, it'll be a very important example because later on we will kind of, whenever we have some uh, representation of a real algebra, we can kind of make a representation of SL2 from there. So the results here will be used uh, over and over during this semester. So the goal of this uh, section is to find all irreducible representations of SL2. That's what I want to do today. And first we uh, recall the standard standard basis of SL2. What is that? We have X, which is, by the way, what is the definition of this? A two by two matrix, set a uh, space of two by two matrices whose trace is zero. And uh, Lie, it's a Lie group, a Lie algebra, using the usual Lie bracket, using the usual Lie bracket. X comma y equals x y minus y. Because the elements are the matrices, we can multiply them and then this is defined like that. And the trace, the trace of x equals zero. And the dimension is three and this is st the standard basis. And h, one, zero, zero, minus one. You see that the trace zero zero zero, and the dimension must be three because of the trace zero condition. And we, we have found three linearly independent elements, so this is a basis. And we have already checked that if you use this uh, definition, this is two times x uh, h y minus two y x, y, uh, h. You can check that. So we will use this relation. And if you, uh, ex if you change the position, like x, comma, h, then you will get minus because it's a uh, skew symmetry. So we know how to uh, compute the Lie bracket between any two of these, right? So keep that in mind. The first lemma is that uh, it's for uh, any representation. Let pi be a representation of SL2, C. Um, U, eigenvector of pi of H. So pi of H is a linear map, right? Because pi is a representation. Pi of H is going to be a linear map. Uh, let's say acting on V. Then this is going to be a linear map from V to V. So, so suppose that U is an eigenvector of this operator uh, with eigenvalue, say, alpha. That means uh, pi h v equals alpha v, right? Then pi h pi x alpha equals, oh no, u. u equals alpha plus 2 pi x u. This is the statement. 
Uh, but let's see what this means. So just look at this part. So this is a vector, right? This is a vector. So if you apply uh, h, pi of h to this vector, we get the same vector with some constant multiplication. So what does that mean? This mean that means this is an eigenvector unless it's zero. Because it's possible that this is zero, but we don't say that the zero vector is an eigenvector. So this either this is zero or an, another eigenvector of this operator. That's what this statement is saying. So therefore, either we have either pi x of u equals zero or pi x of u is an eigenvector for pi of h with what is the eigenvalue alpha plus two eigenvalue alpha plus two that's an immediate consequence of this statement and similarly Uh, pi h, if you use now pi y, u, then we have same thing except we have minus here. Then again, this, as a consequence, this vector is either zero or another eigenvector. That's a consequence of this statement. Okay, so how can you prove this? The proof is uh, quite simple. So let's see the proof. But first, observe that we can evaluate this. What is this? Let's first compute this. Because pi is a representation, this is equal to hx, right? That's the definition or condition for a representation. And we know what this is. What is that? Pi 2x. And if the pi is a linear map, uh, it goes outside like that. But what, what is this? This bracket is a bracket in the, the uh, GLV, GLV. So it's the usual uh, bracket, like x, y, minus y, x. So this is pi h, pi x minus pi x, pi h, right? So this is equal to, we know that this is equal to pi x. So we are, let's move, say, this to the other side. Equals uh, plus 2 pi x. This is true, right? But then we can apply u over here. So we apply u, 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 like that. All right? That's true. And uh, what, what is this? u is an eigenvector for this operator with eigenvalue alpha. So you can replace this by alpha u. And this is 2 pi x u, right? But alpha is a constant or so this can be moved in front. So then this is just two. Uh, as we uh, expected. So this is equal to this. So that's the proof. So why it can be done exactly the same way. The simple lemma is uh, very useful. This is true for this pi is not necessarily an uh, irreducible representation. Can, this is true for every representation pi. Uh, okay, now um, we want we, we consider irreducible representation. Now let pi be an irreducible representation of SL2, SL2C. Uh, acting on 
of V. All right. So we want to uh, understand the structure of this representation. Okay. So the stretch is stretch is the following. Mm, so this pi uh, h operator this uh, will play a very important role uh, in the following sense diagonalize the operator this so this is an operator on V diagonalize this diagonalize means so this is a linear map so once you fix a uh, basis it's kind of a matrix diagonalize means we want this matrix to be a diagonal matrix but that means equivalent that is equivalent to saying that we want to find linearly independent uh, eigen vectors which span the whole space so this means ie uh, find uh, eigen vectors spanning the whole space V. If you can find such a, a set of eigenvectors, then yeah, we can diagonalize this operator. First of all, uh, C is algebraically closed. So every linear map or linear operator from V to V must have uh, at least one eigenvalue. So, has at least one eigenvector, say, u with eigenvalue v. Is that right? So, algebraically closed. Because you can just consider the characteristic polynomial of this. And then the polynomial must have a, at least one root. Uh, okay? This is the starting point. And then from this, we will create more and more eigenvalues using the lemma that we just saw. Okay, so let's move on to the next page. So by the lemma, by the lemma, uh, pi h x k u equals alpha plus 2 k pi x u for all k. So th actually the lemma is uh, this when k equals 1, but if you apply the lemma repeatedly, then uh, we can get this. So we have this. This is nice because if this is, oh, sorry, this should be k over there. If this is non zero, then it's going to be an eigenvector, right? This is either zero or non, uh, zero or eigenvector. So if this is an eigenvector, and it its eigenvalue is different. So different eigenvectors with different eigenvalues will be linearly independent. So if you can find, so in this way you can, we may be able to find many eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and they will eventually be part of the basis that we are considering. So if pi x o k to the k u is non-zero, then this is this is an eigen eigenvector with let's say for pi over h with eigenvalue alpha plus two k. But eventually we must have a zero at, at some point. Right? We cannot have all non zero for every k. Why is that?
because v is a finite dimensional vector space. Uh, since pi h can have at most uh, dimension of say v distinct eigen values, right? You cannot have more than the dimension of v, more than uh, eigen values, more than this. So we must have uh, integer, integer n, such that this is zero. But instead of saying this is zero, let's say uh, n u is non-zero, but n plus 1 is zero. So initially, when this is a zero, the, this thing is non-zero. But if you add this exponent one at a time, eventually we will get a zero vector. Then n is the largest integer for which this is non-zero. After this, everything will be zero. All right, uh, so we are now focusing on this. So let u0 be this, this part, to the n uh, u, okay. so it's, which is non-zero. So it's an eigenvector for the uh, operator at pi of h. And let's say lambda equals alpha plus 2n, just like right there. Then, by the by, this condition, this is uh, when k equals n. This is u zero. So pi h u zero equals this is gonna be lambda lambda u zero. Okay. So pi u uh, zero is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. And moreover, because of this, if you apply, uh, if you if you apply pi x to mu zero, then what is that? Zero, because that's what this is saying. Okay. And now let u sub k be pi of y to the k u k u zero for k greater than equal to zero. So f starting from u zero, we we keep applying y the operator y to this u zero, and then we will get vectors like u u one, u two, u three, etc. And then just think about uh, this u k. Of course, eventually this should. Uh, become zero when k is large by the same reason. Uh, then what, by the lemma, what is pi h of uh, uk? What is this? This is uh, lambda minus 2k uk for k greater than equal to Because, you know, I, this is another way if you just write pi y k u zero equals lambda y. This is, I'm just rewriting this. That's exactly the same as this, right? We just, you know, apply the lemma like k times then you get this. So we have this. So uk, if it's non-zero, it's going to be an, an eigenvector. Okay, then what's next? Uh, is everything okay so far? Now, uh, one can check that 
I, if you apply UK to uh, X to UK, then uh, it's going to be K times lambda minus K plus 1 UK. UK minus 1 or K greater than or equal to 1 this is uh, one of the homework problems so you will do that so you will just uh, accept this for now mm, alright but like I, as I already said Eventually, this will be zero when k becomes large and large. So, uh, as before, uk must be zero for some k. Otherwise, the dimension of v is infinity. So, we can find an inte integer m, unless the equation equal to zero such that uh, UK is non-zero until uh, it's M is uh, so it's a definition this is non-zero for 0K up to M but UM plus 1 is zero we must be able to find uh, M like that Okay, what's next? Let's say this is a star condition. Then by star so we are considering this part. Zero is a This is zero, so if you apply x, it's still zero, right? There is no problem right there. Uh, but this is true for every k, so we can replace this by this. So this is going to be now k equals m plus one, k equals m plus one, so it's m plus one lambda minus m, u m. Right, but we know that uh, um is um is non-zero. This is non-zero, but we multiply some constant, but then we be, we got zero. That means the constant must be zero. But m is a non-negative integer. This is positive, so this must be zero. That means lambda is an in, is an integer. Lambda must be an integer m. Integer. So the eigenvalue that we found over where? Over here, it turns out that it must be an integer. Okay, this is a good thing. Um, non negative integer. All right. Uh, so now let's c focus on these vectors u0, u1, dot, 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 up to um. Let's look at that. It's now it's an interesting thing happened. Uh, let's consider the action of pi x pi y, pi h on these vectors, v, u0, dot, 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 u, m. Let's see what that is. So, u, k, we already know this. This is, this is always an eigenvector for this, right? This is m minus 2k 
U K. Because now lambda is M, I just use M. That's uh, where is it? That is uh, this part. Okay. We know how to apply uh, H. What about Y? We know how to apply here X. X. If you apply X, we get this. And if you apply Y, then what? What is that? What is UK? What is this? Think about the definition. As you uh, K plus one, right? Because UK is U zero. Uh, uh, we apply this K times to U zero. So UK, if you apply this one more time, it will be UK plus one. So we know how to apply how to uh, apply uh, x, y, and h to these vectors. So in summary, we have this and uh, pi y of u k. This is either we increase the index by one if k is less than m, and zero if k is m, right? And we know that if you apply this. This is uh, k times m minus k plus 1 uk minus 1 if k is greater than 0 and z 0 if k equals mt. We have already know this. We've just checked this. This is the summary. Let's say this is uh, these conditions star. Well, what can you see from these relations? They are closed by themselves, right? This means, uh, well, first of all, since u zero dot 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 u m, these are uh, eigen vectors for h pi h with distinct eigen value, eigen vector with distinct eigenvalue, they are linearly independent. So the basic fact in linear algebra, distinct eigenvectors with distinct eigenvalues must be linearly independent. And so let W be the span of these vectors. Obviously, it's a uh, subspace of V. But this is an invariant subspace. Uh, w is invariant. Why? This relation just so shows it. What the, what's the definition of an invariant subspace? If you apply a anything, it just stays there. But the basis is h, y, and x. What kind of, whatever basis element you apply, it just stays there. That means this is, everything is inside if you are after applying this action. So it's an invariant subspace. Invariant and it's non-zero, right? Because we know that there's at least one eigenvector so it's non-zero invariant subspace. Then what can we say? We assume that this is an irreducible representation. This means uh, W must be uh, V because it's an irreducible, irreducible property. It cannot have anything smaller than itself as an invariant subspace except zero. So, V is the span of U0 dot 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 UM plus uh, UM. But what does that mean? Dimension of V equals M plus 1. We have M plus 1 vectors there. They are linearly independent. It's, they span V, so it's dimension M plus 1. Okay?
But in fact, this shows that every uh, irreducible representation with dimension n plus 1, n plus 1, must be of this form. Because if you take a uh, representation, you just construct vectors like that, then you just get these relations. So they are all isomorphic if you send the UK to the other UK, if you have different, uh, if you started with a different irreducible representation of the same dimension. So this means, this shows that if v, v, v prime uh, irreducible representations of SL to C with, uh, with the same dimension, then they must be isomorphic. They are given, the relation is given like that. So there is a unique but actually, we haven't really checked whether this is a good representation. It's possible that there is no re representation. There is no irreducible representation. We have to really check that if you have this kind of relation, then it really works. It really gives a representation. So this only shows a uniqueness. We have just checked uniqueness. If there is such a thing, it must be unique. But we have to check there is such a thing. <coughs> but uh, if we define uh, a representation by the star relation, like, like here, then it is indeed a representation of SL2C. This is another homework problem. You can check that it satisfies all the necessary axioms for a representation. So, in summary, for every dimension m, or m plus 1, for any integer, non negative integer, or every positive integer, okay, let's put it this way. Theorem for each integer m, non negative integer m, there is a unique rep irreducible representation of SL2C uh, of dimension m plus 1. Up to isomorphism, of course, up to isomorphism. And it is given by star. The relation is explicitly given by the star. So there is only one thing given like that. to uh, finish by uh, stating a theorem and uh, its proof. B basically, this is a uh, summary of what we, what we did. So let's say pi comma v finite dimensional representation of SL2C. Uh, so not necessarily irreducible. So this means pi comma v means pi is a representation acting on v, all right? And first, every eigenvalue of pi of h is an integer. And if v is Eigen vector of pi of h with eigenvalue lambda and 
pi x v equals 0, then lambda is a non-negative integer. So it's like u0, this is like u0. If you remember, the way we prove the previous result, we just found one eigenvalue, and then we, we apply uh, x to it, then we get something we can kind of go going up, and then we eventually uh, it becomes 0. So just before it became 0, we let this to be uh, u0. And then starting from there, we applied uh, y and then going down. So if you apply o, o, x to an eigenvector, 0 is kind of a, the highest eigen, eigenvector, highest vector. And uh, in this case, the eigenvalue will be non-negative. And second, the operators, pi x and pi y, are nilpotent. Nilpotent means some power of this is going to be zero. But this is true because if you keep applying this, it's it gives you another eigenvector or zero. But it cannot produce infinitely many eigenvectors. So if whenever, no matter where you start uh, from a basis ve vector, it will become zero eventually for every basis vector. So it's going to be nilpotent. Basically, we have shown this. And third, uh, if we define S uh, from V to V by this relation, E to the pi x, E to the minus pi y, E to the pi x, then S uh, times pi of x S inverse is equal to minus pi of x h. This we have to prove. And four, if k is an eigen value of pi of h, then minus k minus k plus 2 dot 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 k minus 2 k these are also eigenvalues of pi of h yeah basically the arguments that I presented uh, can be used to prove 1 to 4 so by the same argument, if you think about it, you can prove 1 to 4. So we only need to show the third one. But this is just uh, some computation. Alright, uh, let's prove the third one, third point. Uh, so proof of three. Just by definition, uh, S pi of H S inverse is going to be, because S is just S is uh, given like that. We just use the definition. E to the pi x, e to the mi minus pi y, e to the pi x. Uh, and this just stays there. And minus of this, so we have minus pi of x, e to the y x, oh, e to the pi y, e to the minus pi x just by definition and but we know what this is 
we apply something as in front, some it's inverse at the end that adjoint map. So this is equal to adjoint e to the pi x, and for this adjoint e to the minus uh, pi y, adjoint e to the pi x applied to this operator. Okay, like that. This is operator or something like that. Uh, but here, if you remember, we have a result like this. Adjoint e to the z for any matrix z, this is equal to adjoint uh, no. e to the adjoint z. We, we had a result like that. So if you use that, then we can replace this by e to the adjoint pi of x, e to the adjoint minus pi of x, uh, y, e to the adjoint pi of x, applied to pi of h. All right? So now the thing is, the, the method is just compute this using the definition. Uh, e to the add pi x pi h, what's that? This is uh, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over four, uh, 3 <coughs> factorial, etc. Just the exponential um, uh, series. So this will be, this is 1 plus add, add squared over 2, etc. So it's going to be pi of h plus add means we have this. Right? And 1 over 2 pi of x, pi of x, pi of h, and then continue. But what is this? Uh, h comma h bracket x is 2x. So because they are uh, switched, so minus 2 uh, pi x. So this is pi x, or minus 2. And we uh, take the bracket with the same thing, so it will be 0. So eventually, it's a 0 and 0 at the end. The remaining parts are 0. So this is equal to pi h minus 2 pi x. Now you know the idea. You do the same thing with this. You do the same thing with this. Then you will get the result. So do the same thing. Uh, with e to the ad minus pi y and then e to the this again then we get uh, we obtain 3 just the computation nothing else Any question? Okay, we have a little bit of time left, so let me uh, illustrate the proof we, we have seen over here, because this will appear, this kind of idea will appear over and over. Let me give you a brief uh, summary of the proof of the SL2. So the idea was, uh, so summary of the proof of, uh, how can I say, construction of irreducible uh, representation of uh, SL2C. So we started with, uh, say, U. So eigen value a vector for SL2C, right? We started with an eigen vector with 
eigenvalue say was it alpha at the beginning okay u and then from here we applied uh and then i can say apply like pi x then apply pi x again apply apply pi x until uh, at some point how can I say um, and then zero if you apply this one more time it will bec it'll become zero then we define this to be uh, u zero I think this notation is not really good um, u prime u double prime I don't know something like n we did something like that so you this is uh, u uh, pi of x applied to u and then etc etc you started with and then we now go back this direction by applying uh, y so started from here u0 and then u1 uh, u2 so in fact it's going back this way but it go it can continue until u m until it reaches zero. So here we apply y. So let's just uh, write y. It's a pi y, but okay, pi y. Eventually it becomes zero, and then we show that these, in fact, span the whole space because v is an irreducible. So uh, that's basically the proof, and we know the we know that these are eigenvectors for H, and we know what eigenvalues are, and eigenvalues must be all non-negative, non all, all integers, and especially the eigenvalue for this, so this has eigenvalue, what? The eigenvalue is M plus one. In, uh, was that M? No, yeah, it was, it was M. Eigenvalue is M, non-negative integer. And the dimension is M plus one. So if you look at this sequence, we have a basis element. And if you apply x, some, if, you, if, if, if you say, so if you look at the eigenvalues, the eigen, if you go one step to the left, eigenvalue is decreased by 1. If you go this way, uh, eigenvalue, so eigenvalue here is m, is m minus 2, m minus 4. Or if you go at, at the end, it's going to be minus m. So eigenvalues are decreasing in this way if you apply y. And if you apply x, then it goes in this direction, and then at the end, it will become 0. So, in, so for this reason, sometimes it's called, x is called a, a raising operator, and y is called a lowering operator. It kind of lowers the eigenvalue or eigenvectors, so it goes this direction. So it's just a one path, but if we have more complicated uh, Lie algebras like SL3 or SLN, we have some kind of graph structure like this. It's more complicated, but we still have some kind of directions. If we go apply x, then some ki somehow it's, up, it's going up, and if you apply y, then some somehow it's going down. So x is called a raising operator, y is called a lowering operator. And the vector here at, at the highest position is called a highest, uh, highest weight vector. It will be, we will learn this mo um, in more details later. But that's basically uh, the brief outline of the structure for this. You will see more interesting examples later. OK? All right, then uh, I'll stop here, and thank you for your attention.